another week and another amazing tutorial we have today. It's this little ducky and he's going to be uh, inflated with this new function that we have on Blender 282 experimental version. And look at that, it, isn't this awesome? <laughs> we can just move the parameters here in the cloth and using pressure, we can manipulate how much uh, we want this toy to be inflated, this balloon to be inflated. All right, so we're going to do this little ducky with a simple sphere first. So let's start. Okay, I'm using Blender 282 Vanilla, which means I haven't switched any other settings. Many people have been criticizing me because of the UE, the, the, the interface colors. But now you see how dark and how um, very, very dark uh, the parameters are. This is why I need uh, basic contrast and that's why we use the clear interface parameter. Anyways, we're going to create a plane, shift A, and now we're going to apply a solidify um, modifier. After that, I want you to uh, select collision on this and of course if you need to unselect this, just press Alt A and now we're going to add just a simple sphere to do our bidding. So let's reposition these two objects on the scene and now with the ball selected, just click cloth, and then you come down here to the parameter where it says pressure, just mark it up, and now you can manipulate that as long as this is cache. So for that, you just press, press play, and now you're going to see a blue line, which represents the caching. Now, if you press play, dial the parameters here on pressure, you're going to see immediate interaction on the viewport. And this is, this is what we wanted. Okay, this is as simple as it gets. This is simple, you have just spent around one minute in creating all of this, and now you have a bouncing ball with internal pressure um, on it. So in our case, we want to present this tutorial with the ducky, okay? This is not for kids. We're just using this as, a, as an inflatable object, any day, every day object, which can be found anywhere in the planet, not specifically for kids. I'm talking to you, Kappa. Anyways, so here we're going to apply the same parameters and um, on this object using cloth. And now we're going to animate the pressure while it, it is playing back. Because as you can see, we can see that um, this viewport is very responsive at the moment with this model. So you can dial the pressure, the internal pressure negatively, all right? So that will... Um, push off all the air that this has and if you bump it up uh, past 16, past 20, then the balloon is going to be very much inflated. Now, if you want to explode this, there's a method to do that, which I will show you in this tutorial if you follow the card on your right upper hand corner. And now the material that I'm using here also on the floor it's just a simple um, shadow catcher created by a transparency using the EV viewport to um, hold the, the shadow. But for that, you need to activate shadows as well. And of course, you, you're going to come here to the properties of the EV viewport and then activate high depth shadows and also soft shadows. You can also activate bloom and this will give you this nice effect. And of course, I have an HERI as the world environment, which is feeding the light. Of course, I have an additional area light. And now let's see the result. Look at that, isn't that neat? Perfect, that's it. That You, then you can apply this effect to any object in, in your scene. And let's make this a camera. So let's press right now with this viewport as it is, Control alt 0 on the numpad. This will make the active view a camera view. And then you press F12 to get this render out. Finally, we're going to save this. I'm going to name this um, Inflate, just like that. And let's do something more advanced. Let's add an A4 field. Since we're playing with collisions and real uh, cloth settings, we can also activate this force field in our case, vortex, like you see here, and we can play with the strength. Let's see what the result yields. If you press play right now, since the strength is a, a still number, you can dial in much more 
uh, higher values, and then you'll get this twisting around. Now, that's very interesting. You can do that with wind also, and you can do that with any other forces that you have available from pressing Shift A at forces. All right, this is over. This tutorial is over. Thank you so very much. Now, let's talk about COPPA. COPPA is um, checking out all the channels, cre creator channels, so that they will be correctly identified for kids uh, or not for kids. Uh, we don't have a general audience right now at the moment, so that's why I'm labeling my video the way you already saw at the beginning. Okay, because we don't know what kind of uh, person will come tomorrow and then they will claim that all video tutorials or all video trainings are claiming making you a professional instantly. So I don't know what kind of craze that will come to any kind of mind, but you know, in the world that we live in, I mean, come on, there are some things that have to make sense under the law and of course for the truth. And right now the only truth that we can see as YouTube creators is that we have to label our videos correctly so that we will not get not only banned or or fined, but we also um, need to distribute our content in a, in the right way. That's why I see Kappa in a good in a good light because it will allow us to um, to um, rate our videos, our productions. I think that's the the right way to go. You know, like general public PG thirteen and, and stuff like that. If you would read the copyright uh, law. Oh my goodness, I mean, we live on a paradise using YouTube. You, you don't know how many infringements we all will have in the world if you will truthfully follow the law, the copyright laws. And right now we're having uh, issues protecting kids' rights and that's why COPPA and YouTube are joining forces and some of the creators in YouTube have had their own views about this but I see this as a, a right movement um, from YouTube because there were some loopholes. This is the part that you don't know. This is the part that no ch other channel is talking about. But I, I want to tell you something about what was going on throughout the past 2017-2019 uh, productions regarding kids' channels. And the truth is that they will they found a loophole, you know, they will create uh, relative channels uh, pertaining to the same owner, you know, the same owner would have two or three different kid channels, like let's say, for example, my channel is called the, um, I don't know, the Pink Elephant, all right, where I have all the Pink Elephant songs, and then this same owner would create the, the channel Green Elephant, because, you know, there are kids that don't like pink, and they would surely pick uh, green elephant uh, channel in YouTube. So green channel, uh, I'm sorry, green elephant um, channel in YouTube, which was under the same owner, would create songs or themes or or tags that would relate to pink uh, elephant channels. And you can see right here that if you produce something and then you switch something around, like for example, in this case, the colors or the name, then they will both get get relative views, relative views, because that's how the algorithm in YouTube works. And as you can see, this this was a giant loophole. I don't know how uh, not anyone is talking about the white elephant in the room, which is clearly the monetization of the kids channel because of this. Now, I'm not saying that if you produce content for kids, you should be banned or demonetized. All I'm just saying is that there were some mischievous people that took advantage of the algorithm and started creating this um, this uh, relative content channels. And all they um, changed from between one another was just a single word, was just a single description, was just a single uh, minute, you know, to start early, to start late. And then you find that these channels between them have relative views, relative viewers, you know, because your viewers can be my viewers and nothing in YouTube restricts that. So if we share, like, let's say, for example, if we share, then there's nothing wrong with that. Your, your viewers can see the content on the pink elephant channel and they can also be subscribed or watch the content on the green elephant channel. 
and both things are under the same author, so you can imagine you're picking double the uh, monetization. You're picking double, triple, quadruple. I mean, this was just a giant loophole. And I see uh, in the light of COPPA right now, obviously, defending the children's rights, um, but we are left with so many other questions because, like I said before, if you go right now and search under the um, official U.S. copyright laws and <laughs> start reading about broadcasting, oh my goodness. I mean, we're seriously um, enjoying a golden era in, in production as, as producers. Okay, I don't want to make this too long. I just wanted to share my views on COPPA and all that I have been listening to, especially to the Ayn, the Ayn Kurisine, Kurisine, uh channel. He's very good. He's a very good social lawyer. And I've been asking him about so many, so many issues like um, IP properties and stuff, uh, intellectual properties. Um, I will make a dedicated podcast on that, three-hour dedicated podcast on all of these issues because uh, some big impacts for the good come in 2020 and some other things are left, you know, just hanging in the air for 2020. So I hope I have not made this boring for you and let's... Um, Let's check out our next video. Oh, by the way, the progress on the model that I'm creating for the stylized series is continuing. I'm sorry to take too long on this, but I really, really, really want you to get all the benefits to have a, a common license um, a number four attribute attribution for this kind of work so you can use them on your own stuff. So thank you very much for, for your patience and please subscribe and hit the bell notification button. And also, if you can comment on whatever your views are on COPPA at the moment, I'll be more than happy to share uh, all the information that I have available so you can uh, prepare yourself for 2020 Thumbs as up, a content creator in YouTube. Thank you very much.